on 103.2 FM. From Leyland to Longridge. And Wood Plumpton to Walton Ladale. It's your community. Your radio. Your Preston FM. Ah, it is. It's your Preston FM and it's your Chat City. And uh, nice to welcome my second guest into the studio. We've met before. It's Amy Holden and Amy's area coordinator for cruise bereavement here in Lancashire. So, Amy, a very good morning to you. Good morning to you. And uh, as you said last time, we had uh, another visitor with you, but he's not here this morning. So uh, where's he escaped to? I, my little helper is at school today. <laughs> uh, the last time I came on, I think it was half term, so uh, I had him with me. But today he's in school where he belongs, learning, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, I'm sure he'd rather be in school than sat here with us in the studio at Preston FM. I know when I was at school, I would have rather been in school. Do I tell a lie? Or oh, maybe. Anyway, it's lovely to see you again, Amy. And uh, I believe um, Cruise Bereavement Care in Lancashire, I believe you've also amongst many other things got a, a new training course that's uh, about to take place can you tell us about that yep um all our volunteers they all have to do the training course before they can go out and see the clients now it doesn't matter what kind of work of life they're from whether they work full-time whether they're retired whether they're not in work it all doesn't matter because it is open to anybody over the age of 18 um it's basically a course to train them up in bereavement different kind of um, areas of it it is very intense but at the end of it you can volunteer for crews and go out to see people in their own homes who are experiencing one of the worst things that can happen in a person's life the loss of a loved one and go out and help them get over their grief learn how to cope with it Um, and it it really is so worth doing Mm. if you are interested in the kind of area um, the the kind of thing you get from it I can't describe it um, I actually trained for the course last year um, I've been with Cruz now for six years but after you know just seeing what the volunteers did I really wanted a, more of an idea of what happened when they went out to people's homes so I did the training course just to find out and halfway through got so much from it the you know the the group work learning what actually happened I really did feel like I wanted to go out and see people um and so for the last seven months I've been doing client work going out to see people in their own homes helping them get over their grief and the just the the kind of feeling I get from doing it Mm. is amazing I never actually thought of doing volunteer work even though I worked for a voluntary organisation and now doing it, I get so much from it. It's amazing. Just the kind of feeling you get that you're helping somebody. It's, it, you can't really describe it. It's just kind of like halo above your head, if you will. It just, it really does matter to the people that are, you know, that you're going out to see. So this course lets people be aware of what they will come up against. And, um, I, I can't speak enough for the course. Right. Really, is great. I, I, I was going to ask, and I, I'm, I mean, you were just saying the, about what you'd got out of the course, etc. I often talk to lots of people from lots of uh, agencies, lots of third sector agencies and statutory, who are often looking for volunteers for many, many roles. And I mean, volunteers these days, in in many ways, seem to keep the country running. When it comes to bereavement, volunteering to do bereavement counselling, that to me sounds very kind of intimate and it can be quite emotional, I would have thought. So who are the people who, do you look for special qualities in people who are doing bereavement counselling? What we really look at is the fact that somebody wants to be there and help and have got the commitment to do that. It shows off first when they want to do the course because the course is held over nine weeks on Saturdays. So that's people giving up their precious weekends, their precious free time Mm. to do the training um, and then carry on seeing people once they have done the training um, it's a massive level of commitment and that is what we ask for first and foremost is the fact that you will be taking a lot on and it is a, quite a lot for a volunteer role. Sometimes it's just an hour here and there in a shop maybe but this is quite a big commitment um, and that is brought over as soon as you know people say I'm interested, what is involved. Um, anything else, it's all kind of taught. It helps if you're good at listening Um that's the kind of real need um, as that is what you're doing a lot of the time is just listening 
the first few um, of my clients that I've been to see, I sat there for an hour and just listened mm. whilst people speak. And it's amazing how much people do express when there is just someone there, even better if it's a stranger because they don't know you. That. And it's amazing what they just talk about. And just for someone to be there listening is what is needed. And that's that's first and foremost, obviously, is being able to listen and take everything in. Everything else really is taught. Um, that's all I can really say. I, 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 yeah, I, I would imagine it, it, it also helps the person because when somebody's lost someone, there are times when family and friends don't know what to say to someone, do they? And and the person can feel rejected when, in fact, what it is, it's that somebody doesn't know how to approach them or what to say to them. So by being able to talk to somebody who's not emotionally attached to them, I probably could imagine would make a big difference. Yeah, that's right. They don't know their background. Some people don't feel comfortable talking to friends and family um, for, for different reasons. If something happened within the bereavement I, and it just they can't speak to that person... Or, like you say, if they're too close, some people don't want to burden people, mm. um, which they you know, they often find that they are doing. So a stranger, even though it's it does kind of seem a bit, ah, talking to a stranger, someone I don't know about, something that's so intimate, it's actually quite easy to speak to somebody a lot more that you don't know than yeah. it is to somebody that you do, because you can tell them a lot more. Everyone's... You know, everyone's got a judgment, but we come across as non-judgmental. Right, what yeah. what goes on in that session stays in that session. Um, it's completely confidential. The only thing that we do say to clients is if you say something that is a worry, such as if you're going to harm somebody else or harm yourself, then we do have to tell somebody. Mm. But other than that, it's completely confidential, and they've got that knowledge that they're their story is not going to go any further than those four walls. So how many volunteers do you have at the moment then? And uh, what kind of walks of life are people from? We've got just under 100 at the moment. Now, not all of the volunteers work at the same time. We've got some supervisors that do supervision work. All of our volunteers have a dedicated supervisor to make sure they're okay. So there's those. There's clients... um, who have a very, very particularly hard case. And if a volunteer goes to that, say they're there for quite a long time um, and it's been quite hard, sometimes they decide, I'm going to take a rest just Mm. for a few weeks, months, just to kind of get yourself back to it. Others have other things going on in their lives. They've got a heavy workload. They maybe have just had a bereavement themselves, which does put them out of the loop for a while. Um, It kind of just kind of works around them, really. So that is allowed. If you want to take a break, then that's okay. Um, you know, as long as you kind of come back at the end of it, really. Um, now our volunteers are so far spread. It's it's unbelievable. We've got young to old. I think our youngest is probably around 22. Our oldest, I know what somebody that's in their 80s. Mm. So it's a massive spread. We've got a lot of um, professional workers. Right. Some counsellors that like to do this in the spare time to help people. Um, a lot of retired people as well. Um, just looking for something to do and obviously helping people is a fantastic way to, to spend your time. Um, males, females. Yes, I was going we've to got, ask. Uh, we've got a really, really good spread. And the last few courses we've been um, getting a lot more eager people really really eager ready to get out there and not just go out and help our um our clients but to get involved in the actual charity the running of it fundraising and it's been a fantastic breath of fresh air it's really been needed and as you say everybody's a volunteer so i understand you've also just set up a new fundraising group we have yet yeah. it's been something we've wanted to do for a while it's been our to-do list and we finally got around to doing it basically because the the volunteers that have been coming through the last few years have been so fantastic and really just wanting to get out there and do something. Um, our last course in particular was full of lots of eager little beavers wanting to really help the charity um, and a couple of them have just set up the fundraising group. Um, they've taken a bit of the heat off me. Um, my role is quite far spread, so fundraising was something kind of like stuffed in the middle somewhere. So having them on on hand to do a lot of the work has been really helpful for myself. 
Um, now, there's just six of them at the moment, and we we want to make it as big as possible, really. So we are starting now to ask for anybody who who wants to just be involved in a bit of fundraising, a chance to meet new people, have some fun. Um, you know, you can give as little or as much as you want mm. in the amount of time. Um, you don't have to be a trained bereavement volunteer, so there's no training involved. It's just getting together with a, a really nice group of people and just trying to make a difference to a really worthwhile charity. Right, and uh, everything we're talking about at the moment, I think, can be found on the new website, which I think... Unfortunately, (laughs) no. Can it not? Because the website is The website is still in process of being made and put online. All right. Um, We are starting to tell people about it, just to kind of drum up the, uh, the interest... But at the moment, it can't be found on the website. <laughs> <laughs> but that will be soon. It will be very soon. Ah, well, you see, radio's the best thing. Otherwise, get there everybody listening to the radio. And uh, you're based, have I got this one right, in Leyland? That's right, yes. <laughs> but the courses themselves, are they based in Leyland? Um, what we do is we try to look for areas in which we need the most volunteers. Um Last year it was Preston, because Preston is quite a large area. It also kind of covers Chorley, South Ribble as well, so it is a big area. Um, last, a couple of courses ago, it was in East Lancashire because we needed people in that area. This year we are again concentrating in Preston because that's the longest waiting list we have. Um, and this year it's going to be held over at Vine House, which is in Ribbleton mm. in Preston. It's just around the corner from Deepdale. So it's still quite easy to get to off the motorway. It's still easy for p- other people to come. And we are accepting you know, other um, people that want to do it, not just from the Preston area, but from everywhere else in Lancashire as well. It's just we decided to hold it in there um, just because it is quite central to Preston. And also a big shout out to the the ladies over at Vine House because we work really closely with them um, and it's a fantastic charity as yes, well. Yes, I know. Yeah. They, they do a lot of work and we get along really well with them and they've been very, very helpful to us. Um, so a massive shout out to them. Um, but yeah, the, the kind of, we look for places that are good to train in, who have a lot of space. Um, our training um, is quite long and intense and we like to break off in little groups rather than do big group work. Mm. So Vine House has got nice small rooms that the people can break off into, quiet, serene, just really nice to, to do your training in really. So for anybody who does want to find out their name in more about uh, the training, about the fundraising group, where's the best place for them to go to find out more? Well, the best place really to find out anything is to either ring me up or send me an email at the moment. Um, the office phone number is zero one double seven two four three one six three one, or the email is Lancashire at cruise, which I must say is C R U S E. Not cruise as in cruise liner. That's right. org dot uk. So that's Lancashire at cruise dot org dot uk. There we are. How many calls do you roughly get from people needing your support, and how do they find out about cruise? We have um, adverts in um, the yellow pages, directs, etc., etc. Most most of our um, referrals do come from the doctor surgeries, mm. from the GPs. I'd say around ninety percent come from our GPs. Um, now we only accept self referrals, so we do need the person themselves to ring up to our right. helpline. It's because we just make want to make sure that there is the person yes. themselves that want the yes. help. Sometimes you can get a call saying, oh, this person really needs help. Can you give them a ring? Yeah. Then you ring them and they say, oh, I, don't, I don't need help. So it's just to make sure that we are getting the, the right reason for people calling. Um, if people have got a problem with, with ringing up themselves, then they can have somebody with them. That's fine. Um, the initial kind of like assessment on the phone, somebody will ask you, a little bit about your bereavement so you will have to talk about Mm. it a little bit just take some details then they're placed on the waiting list um and we've got kind of four waiting lists because lancashire is such a large area so they go to kind of their area and at the moment the waiting lists are very very small um we've had problems in the past that they've been months and months but at the moment you're talking about weeks right so it's you know it, you can literally be seen within a matter of weeks and um, which is really important to somebody yes, who I'm rings up and uh, is desperate for somebody yeah. to talk to and to hear them say no you've got to wait for three months is not what you want to hear 
so at the moment we we are really working on the waiting lists making sure that they're kept down so people can be seen as soon as possible because that is what is you know very important that yeah. people need to be seen sooner rather than later yeah i can understand that amy can i thank you for coming into the studio this morning and uh, i'm sure I'll be meeting you again in the not too distant future thanks for having me again thank you okay if you have any news or events you'd like to share with huey and our chat city team why not give us an email chatcity at preston.fm <laughs>